Good morning guys, Mike here. This morning I'd like to do something a little bit different than uh, my normal videos. And I'd like to do one of those what's in your box videos. And I have two tool and die makers boxes, at least the boxes that contain my tool and die maker type tools. Now this is my Kennedy and this is my Gerstner. And what I'd like to do is kind of take a walk through my Gerstner and show you what I've got in there. When I refer to tool and die making and, um, and tool and die shops, I'm referring to job shops. I'm not referring to captive shops. That's a totally different thing. Uh, a, a tool and die job shop back in my geographic location back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s was, was more or less... Um, we did all new work and probably 98% was new work. It was, uh, it might be um, something new that had never been built before that was designed or it could be a replacement tool, but it was still new and it needed to be tried out. When I started my, my uh, trade, I started as a tool and die maker leaning heavily towards dies so you know if I was going to really describe myself I would say I'm a die maker but uh, later on in, in in later years I sort of switched over to mold making for quite a period of time just because I wanted to learn how to do it the, the shop that I worked in was um, uh, bought out by a, a company that um, that had a, a great need for mold making and mold making was the hot thing, you know, the engineering grade plastics, were, you know, technology was, was blowing up and um, everything was beginning to be made more and more out of plastics because the, the, the better grade of plastics. And it was a tremendous need for mold makers. And so uh, that's really where the money was. So I switched over and, uh, and I enjoyed it. I would say Mold making is kind of a specialty in itself, and I would say that uh, being a mold maker is being a, a very precision machinist, whereas a die maker is is has to be a machinist, uh, has to be able to run a crew, um, and but has to also be able to, but has to have a great deal of engineering knowledge. Uh, mold making, you're usually giving given drawings and, and quite a bit of work has gone into uh, uh, translating the part into uh, the mold uh, to compensate for shrink draft um, and that sort of thing and, and uh, some of the uh, technology required to get the flow fronts right and all that stuff so that's usually done by a mold engineer and then and then the mold maker takes his drawings and, and duplicates it exactly in a tool and die job shop back in my era, old I call it old school, people I think have seen videos on YouTube and so forth uh, from, the, from the olden days where you see a tool and die maker toiling on his bench all by himself with, um, uh, you know, doing a little tool that you can pick up with one hand. Uh, tool and die making is, is way more than that. And, and in the job shop, uh, world uh, a tool and die maker uh, uh, and i would say a lead tool and die maker basically is like a, a sort of a supervisor lead man type thing where depending on how many jobs you're assigned you lead a crew of people you might have a one or two apprentices and you might have two or three general machinists working with you and then of course there's a special machinists that are assigned to uh, particular machines, you know, jig bores, uh, jig grinders, uh, EDM machines, um, wire EDM machines, and those people are assigned and they work on those full time. General machinists, they jump around and they they make uh, parts uh, at your uh, uh, under your supervision, and then of course the tool and die maker takes and it quite often finishes those parts, maybe on a, on a surface grinder or something like that, and then. Uh, assembles them, goes through the tryout and the fine tuning, and uh, so that's that's my frame of reference. At least that's what a tool and die job shop toolmaker did um, back in my generation. 
And uh, so now, with that said, uh, let's take a look at my toolbox and we'll go through it. And uh, you might find something interesting in there. So, okay, so I'm going to do that now. My Gerstner has seven drawers, and the center drawer is designed to hold a machinery handbook, and that's what I have in mind. Um, my machinery handbook is 17th edition. It was new when I bought it, and that's when I started my apprenticeship, and you had to have one of these to go to school because a lot uh, a good cherry or schooling was based on the machinery's handbook. Top right drawer, I've got some taper gauges here. Um, my little tool maker square with several different blade options. Small hole gauges. Uh, snap gauges. I call them snap gauges or snap or uh, yeah, they're telescoping gauges more correctly. Some diamonds for the surface grinder for radius dressing, straight diamonds, and uh, some some junk in the bottom. You'll find that quite often. Um, I don't know what this. Oh, some tickets from the Elks Club, and I don't know what these things are. Sweepstake tickets. Okay, so that's top right. Top left is. Uh, Pretty common, you'll find uh, several junk drawers in a tool and die maker's box. I, I just, things that are left over from jobs, you know, small boring bars. Um, uh, more boring bars with uh, carbide tips, a magnet. Points for my indicators. Um, some parts left over from jobs. Uh, I built the die for this. I think this has something to do with lighting contactors. I built the die for that, and then also buy. Uh, I also built the the machine that assembled these little silver contacts in there. Uh, pieces of broken carbide because you don't want to throw them away because who knows someday you may want to make something out of carbide. Piece of carbide here that that um, you know you'd make uh, put on the tip of a scraper. Uh, let's see what else we have. Some long boring bars. This is all stuff that you used on the job and uh, you didn't, uh, you know, they didn't expect to get it back, you know, because uh, a lot of this stuff is not commonly used. I got some lead for pencils in here, an R drill. I don't know what I, why that R drill is in there. I think an R drill is for a, uh, maybe a 1 8 pipe tap. A uh, pilot hole for a pipe tap or something. Um, here's a split lap. Some people don't know what a split lap is. You put a piece of emery paper in there and you roll it up and then you can lap a hole out with it. Uh, my pencil, red side and, and a black side and some notches carved in it so nobody can steal it. A compass. Um, drum standing wheel. Uh, sleeve for a grinder to uh, take it from quarter inch down to uh, eighth inch. It looks like a homemade one. A small screwdriver. This is a, uh, some of you guys might recognize this. We use this in a uh, EDM machine to, to uh, remove uh, broken bolts and taps and stuff like that. You uh, disintegrated them and uh, water Deionized water injects down the center of it to flush it out, and you can um, uh, you can disintegrate the center of a broken tap with that. Uh, a long drill of some size, I don't know what size. Uh, yeah, some stuff I don't even know what it is. Drill blank. Another another tap eroder. Uh, what's this? Um, there's a small boring bar. I'm going to say that the tip of that is about a 32nd of an inch, and it's got a carbide tip on it. This happens to be a uh, C. It's a 1 16th actually. Uh, Bochum, very uh, well-known name in boring bars back in those days. 
So that pretty well, pretty well does it for uh, for that drawer. Okay. So, oh yeah, a couple keys for my toolboxes in there. So that's the second right. Here's third right. Special end mills. They've got um, some special stuff ground on the end. There's a t taper end mill. I don't know. It looks like about a five degree, seven degree taper on it. Um, end mills, ball mills, um, small long mills, small long mill. Um, yeah, dull. Yep, so that's pretty much pretty much all end mills in that. Oh here's a here's a specialty cutter ground on a decal grinder. I've got several of those. We had a panograph and uh, there was you know some jobs that we did using a panograph. I, I used to use occasionally on mold making I would use the panograph um, to make electrodes. Um, so so you make a three corner cutter or uh, a single lip cutting um, cutter. Uh, that boring bar here. I don't know what that's doing in there. So there's a there's my uh, small end mill drawer. Fourth drawer down on the right. Uh, small drill chuck, sensitive drill chuck. This is a uh, all brick, and it's missing its uh, sliding tube here. Um, a pin chuck has a small drill in it. That's for when I mashed my finger, I could drill a hole to relieve the blood. Uh, tweezers for getting splinters out of your fingers. Um, there's a wiggler set, edge finder set, uh, radius gauges, Lufkin radius gauges, uh, metric indicator. This was back when we didn't use a metric much. Uh, die light, or we call it a die light, that's a flexible head light, but we used it to light up dies when we were setting punches. And a sleeve set, I don't know what I was going to use that for, it's a sterret, it's a real nice sleeve set for a magnetic uh, base. Okay, so first drawer on the left hand side, reamers, and some small counter borers and that looks like a rod for a magnetic base you see a bunch of pennies in different drawers I used to use pennies to uh, underneath the uh, hold downs to save the tables of machines so we use them between there they're nice and soft and they keep from damaging the table so reamers and counter borers Second drawer on the left, um, center drills and reamers. And each tool and die maker held on to their reamers because every reamer cuts a little different. And so you kind of remembered what results you got with each reamer. In other words, um, this reamer. Uh, you know will put me about two tenths under and that's a good fit for quarter inch to half inch dowels and uh, you run it at a certain speed and you use a certain type of oil either cutting oil or um, something like that and and you get a certain result so you, you got to know your own reamers and you you really didn't want to use anything but there's a spotting drill on a extension um, long small drills. We used to use these long small drills for electrodes when I in my mold making days for drilling flush holes in electrodes. And here's another junk drawer. This is a this is the uh, my third drawer on the left. Uh, some some molds I made, you know when 
when you make molds, you don't normally get parts back because you, you don't, uh, it's not like dyes where you have your own presses in house and you can try them out and save yourself a sample souvenir. And molds, it's rare to get the parts back because um, you, we, at least we didn't have any tryout presses. So uh, out of the goodness of their hearts, once in a while, um, one of our customers would send some parts back for our own amazement. I got some what are these 50 cent pieces in there for some reason or other. Some more pennies, some uh, holders for stones for uh, polishing molds, um, some Q tips, some gauze for setting, uh, setting up punches on dies, can opener so you can open your Denny Moore soup can for lunch. Top center drawer. Have micrometers from uh, zero to one to five to six. My two smallest one, my zero to one and and uh, one to two are uh, Lufkins, chrome plated Lufkins, and those were bought new. And uh, this is for my height gauge. And that's pretty much the top center drawer or long center drawer. Say. Long center drawer, second down. There's an Arkansas hard stone, uh, a three inch um, scale. My triangles, those are shop made. Thread pitch gauges, protractor. Center gauge, a couple of a couple of thread mics in there. My square head, my 24 inch uh, square uh, scale, my 12 inch square scale, uh, a long uh, 12 inch uh, scale, flexible scale, and uh, let's see a jeweler's loop, side plate for my uh, angle plate, and small square. I use that a lot. Okay. Here's here's the bottom long drawer. And uh, I have my sign plate, shop made sign plate, not sign plate, sign bar. Uh, this is a this right here is a magnetic V-block shop made aluminum base with steel pins driven in it and you put it on the magnet of your surface grinder and it transfer the, transfers the magnetism through the pins and holds your work onto the V-block. This is my, uh, I added this later, I bought this from the guy. Uh, this is my machinist level, steric. Um, this was my dad's. I've never used it. This was my dad's. This is a for indicating. This is brown and sharp for indicating a something in on a lathe. Never used it. I'm gonna say that probably comes from the 30s. I don't know that. Brown and sharp, Province, Rhode Island. Box in excellent shape. Wood box keep it in there for nostalgia. Here's a Shars set of um, gauges for uh, center gauges for setting up and uh, sharpening, checking the sharpen on uh, sharpening on a tool bit for uh, acne threads. Um, here's uh, thread wires measuring for measuring threads. A couple of federal indicators. These were bought new. Both of these were my big federal I I have to admit to you that I am a uh, federal addict I have a bunch of federals these two were bought new but I bought a bunch of them off of eBay because I just love these things there's my small that's my working indicator my working federal indicator this is for uh, holding my indicators when I am tramming a, a hole that's shop made. And I 
have these two little allen wrenches are what I use to uh, um, clamp my indicator in there with so I just keep them attached to it so I don't lose track of them. And there's my angle head for my my stirrup uh, set. And then uh, finally we have uh, my, my Lufkin um, duck bike. That was bought new also. Chrome. It only goes up to I think uh, that's zero to one, one to two, two. That's that's two to three. It'll measure two to three. And that does it for my. Well, no, it doesn't really. Uh, the top of my Gerstner. I'll give you a little little tour of that. Okay, top of my Gerstner. I hope you can see this a little bit. Uh, this is basically uh, where I put some of my reference material. Uh, Here's, a, here's an oldie, Tool Room Grinding, Kalamazoo Mill Supply Company. This is a Norton, a book put out by Norton. Good book, just in there for reference. Grease pencil. This is where I'm keeping my digital uh, angle finder. Uh, my orange Illinois tool. Um, Illinois tool trig book there, my uh, adjustable parallels, a pen, uh, a, uh, I don't use this anymore, this is a uh, brown and sharp um, analog style caliper. Um, some reference books here, some band-aids, you know what those are for. Here's a Bridgeport slip chart, uh, slip chart for uh, speeds and feeds. It's in plastic case. I had <laughs> had about 20 of these and then when I, I worked at one shop I handed them out to all the guys. Bridgeport. Bridgeport uh, sent a bunch of these to me when I bought a, uh, I forget, I think it was Boss 6, one of the early Bridgeport uh, CNC mills. And some more reference books. This I used a lot. Mechanics Dust Pocket uh, Reference Book and the Morse Machinist Guide. You probably have seen those. I got some more reference books. There's an old thing for trig. Trig for dummies type thing. Chart. <laughs> uh, set up procedures for sign plates from Excello. And this is, uh, I worked in a union shop once upon a time. This is my ID for this. Uh, tool and die deal. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I better not show that. Uh, okay. Then then I have an old, uh, here, here's an oldie, here's an old Starrett, uh, old Starrett catalog. Look at that, boy, I'll tell you what, that thing's like brand new almost. Stare uh, so from Cutting Tools Inc. from 432 South Fellows Street, South Bend, Indiana. We didn't, uh, we weren't that far from South Bend, Indiana. So, and uh, here's an old book down at the bottom here, Pratt Whitney, uh, Precision Tools and Gauges Catalog. <laughs> I just threw them in there, and they've been in there for decades now. And uh, yeah, so. That pretty much does it for the top of my box. And this is pretty typical of what you would see back in the day. Tool and die makers didn't have as many tools as you would really think they would. Um, the job shop tool makers were kind of a migratory bunch. They would, you know, they would jump ship and go to another shop. You know, if they could get 25 cents an hour more, they'd go down the road a block. And back in those days, there was a tool and die shop on every corner, it seemed like. And um, so they had the basics and they had the key things that they could uh, use as for multiple purposes. And uh, they couldn't afford to have like 600 pounds of tools. I have many more tools now 
uh, than I would have back, or I did back in those days. So, okay, so that's a tour of my box. I hope you found it interesting, and we'll wrap this one up right here. I'd enjoy to hear any comments you might have, and so until the next time, this is Mike, signing out.